Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation today. I'm Vyosa Pusha. I'm a platform engineer at Moss and Moss is a spend management solution that enables companies to manage all of their spending easily and transparently by offering credit cards, digital invoice management and automated accounting. Today we will cover the best practices for modularizing a Terraform project. More specifically, we will discuss about Terraform state, Terraform modules, environments, and a few tips on using Terraform effectively. So first, let's uh, start with remote state with versioning and locking. So by default, Terraform state is stored locally in a file named Terraform state. When working with Terraform in a team, using a local file makes Terraform usage complicated because each user must make sure that they always have the latest state before running Terraform. Furthermore, what if two or more engineers execute Terraform apply or Terraform plan at the same time? This creates a significant problem where Terraform state can become corrupt, leading to data loss or conflicts. To resolve these challenges and ensure smooth collaboration among team members working on the same infrastructure, we use remote state. This means that although everyone works on their local machines, the Terraform state is stored in a shared central location, allowing everyone on the team to access and work with the same version of infrastructure. So Terraform supports storing state in Terraform Cloud, in Amazon, Azure Cloud, Google Cloud Storage, etc. So remote state is implemented by a backend or Terraform Cloud both of which you can configure in your configurations rules module. So first we need a bucket. I'm not going to go on details on this, but make sure that you have a bucket created. Then add the backend Terraform configuration and make sure to specify your um, awesome bucket name. After that, run Terraform init. Terraform detects that you already have a state file locally and prompts you to copy it to the new cloud storage bucket. Then just you know um, follow the instructions from the command line. So to sum up, uh, by storing state files in a central location, it becomes easier to track changes to the Terraform configuration and prevent concurrent access to the state file, which can lead to conflicts and data loss. Additionally, this approach makes it easier for multiple team members to collaborate on the same infrastructure. So now let's continue to another step called uh, modules. So modules are a key feature on Terraform. A Terraform module is a collection of Terraform configuration file that can be used to provision a particular set of resources. So modules are designed to be modular and reusable, allowing you to create code that can be easily shared across projects. Each module can contain one or more resources depending on the needs of your project. So now why do we use modules? First, modules are designed to be modular, making it easy to reuse code across different projects. Then simplicity. So modules provide a simple and easy to understand way to provision infrastructure resources using code. And then consistency. Modules allow you to create consistent infrastructure across different environments, ensuring that your resources are provisioned in the same way you intend it. In the other words, it helps us follow dry code principles by organizing, encapsulating, and reusing code. But in the end, let's do not forget that uh, modularizing configuration is um, needed only when we use um, repeatable configuration in our projects. Uh, so modularize at will. Now, um, I wanted to share two approaches I came across working with Terraform. And one is uh, dividing everything into modules. I don't know how to call this approach, but uh, let's explain it first. So we have IAM module, we have storage, and I don't know, network uh, pops up, whatever it really makes sense for our infrastructure. In IAM, we store uh, everything related to permission for the whole project. With storage, the same. So we have some sort of services grouping. Let's call it services grouping. 
The other one is um, solution specific grouping. I call it like that because for me, it makes sense that I define um, solution specific resources or configuration in a module. For example, we have web server cluster and we um, configure everything um, related to that there. I don't know, I am permission network, um, whatever really makes sense or data storage or yeah, whatever really uh, you use in your infrastructure that would make sense to kind of uh, merge all the resources needed for that specific um, solution. In our team, we started going from the first approach to the second approach because it, because it really made sense for us to have this clear um, code um, when looking or when like um, creating new features or um, anything, uh, anything like that. So now uh, let's continue uh, talking about defining environments for our infrastructure. What options do we have and which one we chose as a team considering uh, the consequences? So to manage multiple environment, um, it's important to organize the Terraform code in a structured and maintainable way. There are two primary methods to separate between environments, directories and workspaces. So uh, directories involve organizing your Terraform configuration files into separate directories for each environment. For example, staging, production, or development. Each environment directory contains its own Terraform code, including configuration files, modules, state files, etc. This method provides a clear separation of code for each environment, making it easier to manage and maintain. On the other hand, workspaces involve using a single set of configuration files, but with multiple workspaces within those files. I'm not gonna go in detail on this, but like each workspace corresponds to a different environment, such as staging, production, or development. Both directories and workspaces have their pros and cons, and which method to use really depends on your specific use case. However, generally speaking, directories are a more flexible and scalable approach as they provide a clear separation of code for each environment. In our case, uh, we use directory separated environments because um, it really made sense for us to test changes between different, uh, different environments. Uh, and of course, we know that we actually have a lot of duplication code between staging and production. But in our case, this is a very clean and, and uh, isolated, separated way be like, uh, between these environments. And of course, we use separate files for each environment. So um, in the end, just to give a very generic example on using module uh, here, uh, let's define a module, um, let's say a VPC, security command center or database. Uh, and we use one of these modules in one of our um, environments, let's say production and, and staging. For example, using security command center in our um, staging or production environment, we can define it like this, right? We define the module, uh, the source of the module, and whatever environment um, we're, we, we are currently using. In our case, it's staging and, and production, and we're reusing this module in here. Then just define the variables as well whatever the module is intended to accept. Now, um, let's continue with a few tips that I really find them useful. First, we use uh, pre-commit hooks or add a step in your build script for um, formatting your Terraform code. And this makes it very easy to not, uh, to not really um, care about uh, if the Terraform formatting is correct or not, or anything like that. Uh, so even before committing your code or in your pipeline, adding a step that actually runs Terraform format and add, like pushes a commit to your, um, to your source, source code is actually very, very useful. Or um, yeah, the next one, I would say use loops like count or for each to optimize repetitive resource creation. 
This is, for example, creating multiple service accounts or subnet within just one block of resource code. You can find a lot of examples um, out there for this. And um, last, I would highly recommend to have an amazing readme file that explains your infrastructure as code. By explaining, I mean the code conventions, the infrastructure structure, um, what really makes sense, uh, and the whole um, idea behind like why and how uh, your team decided to do what's intended to do. And this will really uh, save a lot of time for, for engineers who start working on your, um, on your infrastructure. And in the end, everything is learned with practice in different projects. And thank you for joining me today. And I hope that you find these best practices useful in your own Terraform projects. Thank you. Bye-bye.